No. One, one thing, yes. if I might, just um, for the record, and so that there's no misinterpreting um, Jonathan's. He, it's been reported to me, and Jonathan actually reported to me that he started new medication today, and 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 the bailiffs have confirmed that that is making him very sleepy, and if so, if he's acting sleepy and somewhat disinterested. I, I, I'm. That is clearly related to his medicine and not anything else. And so I just wanted the court to note that. I hope court, that hasn't been something the court was as, as concerned about or taken into consideration in, in its judgment. But I was. It's not. Okay. Um, has has that affected your ability to communicate with him today? Well. We have not communicated a lot, but no, I've been able to speak with him, so I, I haven't noticed that as being an impairment to us communicating, Your Honor. Um, it's just he told me he was just very, this new medication, he told me when I, he first came in that it's just is, is he able to he, very sleepy. Is he able to hear and understand me and the others that have spoken here today? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, do you want me to have any other inquiry with him about this issue? No, Your Honor. I just, I just wanted to make sure that. Um, Am I going to hold it against him that, that he? Well, and I, I'm not concerned, but uh, yeah, I wanted you to know that was going on, no. and that he's, you know, I know it. This is reported on the news, and I, I just don't want people to think he's over here disinterested in what's going on. He truly is very. It's just the medication has made him apparently okay. very sleepy. Though. So that's that's my main concern. Just that's on the record. Anything else? All right. Do either of you want to be heard on any other matters before I enter judgments? No, sir. No, Your Honor. Does your client want to say anything? No, Your Honor. All right, sir, if you'll stand, please. Um, after considering all of the evidence that was presented in both um, the trial at, over the last two weeks plus what was offered here today on the sentencing, um, I'm prepared to enter the following judgments, and I'm going to ask the clerk to enter the following judgments. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, the first judgment will be 13 CRS 6237 and 6236. Um, 6237 is the assault with a deadly weapon inflicting serious injury, the December of 2012 assault. Um, and the 6236 is the one count of the misdemeanor possession of uh, personal property with an altered serial number. Those two are consolidated for one Class E Level 1 judgment. The judgment in that case is that the defendant be imprisoned in the Wake County Jail and assigned to the North Carolina Division of Adult Corrections for a 25-month minimum to 42-month maximum term. Um, he is entitled to um, have credit applied to that, and it's my understanding that he will get credit from January the 15th of 2012 up until today. Um, excuse me? 13, I'm sorry, I misspoke. 2013, yes. Um, the uh, the second judgment is in uh, 13 CRS 6235. Um, I'm going to arrest judgment on the conspiracy to commit first degree burglary. Um, and the court's going to find that the defendant is a level one again for felony sentencing purposes. That's the burglary charge um, in count one. The judgment of the court is that the defendant be imprisoned in the Wake County Jail and assigned to the North Carolina Division of Adult Corrections for a 64-month minimum to 89-month maximum term. That sentence runs at the expiration of the judgment that's imposed in 13 CRS 6237. Um, if there is any leftover credit from the first judgment, it obviously would get applied to the second judgment. Um, the uh, Third judgment is count three of 13 CRS 6234. Uh, that's the murder uh, indictment. It's a three count indictment. Um, in the conspiracy to commit first degree murder, that is a B2 felony. Um, the jury having returned a verdict of guilty to that class B2 felony, the court's going to enter a class B2 level one judgment in order that the defendant serve a 157 to 201 month term in the North Carolina Division of Adult Corrections. That will run at the expiration of the judgment that's imposed in 13 CRS 6235. Um, and um, 
with respect to the two murder convictions, the jury having returned verdicts of guilty in file number 13 CRS 6234 on counts one and count two of that indictment to the um, homicides of um, Ms. Saravia and Mr. Flores. Um, I have, I want to go ahead and just read the order that I've prepared. The new statute requires us to make additional findings and I think this, this will be appropriate because that uh, is a um, those will be class A judgments. They are, as I understand it, you don't need to make findings regarding prior record level, but it's a level one. Um, the court's making the additional findings as required by the statute that on October, tw excuse me, August 28th of 2015, the defendant was convic convicted by a jury of two counts of first degree murder. The jury found the defendant guilty in each murder count under the th felony murder rule and under the theory of malice, premeditation, and deliberation. At the time of the offenses, the defendant was 15 years old. Pursuant to Part 2A of Article 81B of Chapter 15A of the North Carolina General Statutes, this court has conducted a sentencing hearing on September the 1st of 2015. This court has considered all of the evidence offered during the trial as well as the testimony, exhibits, and statements of counsel offered during the sentencing hearing. The court has considered the mitigating circumstances submitted to the court, including the age of the defendant at the time of the offenses, the immaturity of the defendant, the ability of the defendant to appreciate the risks and consequences of his conduct, his intellectual capacity, prior record, mental health, familial or peer pressure exerted upon the defendant, and the likelihood that the defendant would benefit from rehabilitation and confinement. At the time of these murders, the defendant was 15 years, nine months old, and he had no prior criminal record. The court does find that the defendant had a history or has a history of mental health issues, including suicide attempts and multiple hospitalizations. The court has reviewed the defendant's writings, specifically states exhibit 14A, and determines that he possesses good intellectual capacity. There is insufficient evidence before the court to find that he did not have the ability to appreciate the risks and consequences of his conduct or the existence of familiar or peer pressure exerted upon the defendant. While considering all of the mitigating circumstances, including the characteristics of the defendant and his family and home environment, the court has considered the nature of the offenses for which he was convicted and the extent of his participation in the crimes and finds that the appropriate punishment to be in each matter life imprisonment without parole and that sentence is appropriate and proportional to both the defendant and the offenses. That is the judgment of the court um, with respect to the two homicides, and I will uh, ask the clerk to draw an order that reflects that. Uh, I will include this part of my, these findings as part of that order as required by the statute. Um, these are class A felonies, and um, I think that's everything I need to include. And I can let you know everything else that needs to go in the judgment. Um, was there anything else on behalf of the state? Yes, sir. Or the defense? No, we respectfully give notice of appeal. All right. Notice of appeal is given in open court. No further notice is necessary. The matter is bound over to the appellate division. Um, and I'll ask the uh, clerk to appoint the appellate defender and uh, order that the defendant be held without bond. Um, anything else, Mr. Cutler? Hug his mother. I'm, that's up to the Sheriff's Department. I'm not going to, okay. they have strict rules about it. I'm not going to bend them or break them. He'll need to go back with the Sheriff. That's all. Thank you. All right. I've got some typos I need to correct on this, but I'll have an extra copy of it. Um, Davis, do you need anything else from me?